Hello and welcome back to Big Mouth and welcome to Saturday's edition of the DCEU Daily where we'll be discussing David Ayer speaking out on a Twitter Q&A and he's been really, really vocal and detailed this time. You'll have to be patient with me as I go down his feed because no one's done an article about this. Surprise, surprise. And then I will be reading an article where Mark Guggenheim discusses the possibility on an Arrowverse movie. This was a fan suggestion, and I'm very happy to take fan suggestions as topics for the DCEU Daily and my other video. And the same fan who asked me some questions yesterday has asked me some other questions which I'll be responding to. Now, if you want to do that, tag me at Movies TV Mad over on Twitter, and I'll do the same for you. Right now, this one fan's uh, gain is your loss. Up to you. Get with the program. This is the place to be. So shall we start? So David Ayer started with this one. So this is from Club D Mascara Negra on Twitter. David. Ah, hang on, I've got to translate this first. Right. David, important question. Is Harley Quinn sexualized in her cut too? Or did the character's objectification happen by imposition by the studio? Which David responds with, watch the Wolf of Wall Street. So really that gives you your answer, doesn't it? Basically, it was Warner Brothers and Jeff Johns who sexualized Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn in David Ayer's Suicide Squad. Um, really bad because, you know, the objectification of Margot as Harley in this movie is despicable. There's that bit when she puts the top on and they're all staring at her. There's a the bit when she bends over. Look, I can't, even I can't defend the studio when it comes to that. So we go on. Now, Sam, now Sam's a very um, big member of the Snyder, Snyder fandom. This is Sam Parker Metal. Just goes to show how influential to, to the final cut those music trailers were. Now, this is interesting. So this is how David responds. For sure, that became a factor. But the reason was BVS got chewed up by the critics and the success of Deadpool. The studio leadership at the time panicked. Their major elements on my cut were ripped out before I could mature the edit. Then John's wrote pages. I had to reshoot. He puts a sad MOJ on. And that looked really, really tragic. So here we've got it from the horse's mouth that Jeff Johns rewrote the movie and forced David to go back and reshoot it. Because I always wondered if another director went to reshoot it. And that's what I kind of assumed. But David was forced to reshoot pages off the movie. Um, absolutely despicable. So what about this one? This needs translating to hate both air and Leto got a bad reputation. And a lot of hate, hater because of something they had nothing to do with. Um, I can't read what um, David says there. Is there even a translation for it yet? That's why it's important for artists to control their work. Absolutely. Now, this is one I'm quite interested in. The music video edit in the theatrical cut. One of the things I dislike the most. I want to see the real thing. Mike, this is David. My cut was all score. No source cues at all. All score. One of the things I love about the DCEU, each movie has its own individual unique score. Beautiful scores by Zimmer, Junkie XL, um, and other composers. That This film was basically all songs and music, which were great songs, but I do like a composed score. Well, in, his, well, in David's cut, He's actually got a score. And David, I'd really like to hear this score. I hope it's released when you release your cup, which I believe will happen. Let's have a look. This is from Hunter B, 2003. They cut and rearranged 40 plus minutes from the first Suicide Squad. No wonder it was such a mess. Because he's quote tweeting David saying they literally cut the first 40 minutes of the movie. So there's 40 minutes missing of this film. That's really important. We see David Ayer's cut of the movie. It was ripped to pieces. I can't emphasize that enough. Let's see if there's any more. 
Let's see. Nope, that's it. So really, right, this is why movie studios should be run by movie people and storytellers rather than accountants. You need accountants in certain departments, but these studios should have presidents who have experience of acting, performing in the arts, writing and understand. But unfortunately, the entities that run studios are bureaucrats. And Sarnoff is a bureaucrat. Um, Jason, whatever his name is, who also runs Warner Media now, is a bureaucrat. And don't get me wrong, he did a great job on Hulu and, I don't, and he's been a gentleman since he's arrived, speaking with the fans, responding to the fans. But listen, what they did to David's movie was reactionary. They wanted to change it because they wanted to turn it into Deadpool. Instead of going with David's original take, they got scared because of the response to Batman versus Superman. It was the wrong thing to do. I understand they were scared. My opinion has always been, if you had no faith in David's material, in Zack's material, you should have cancelled the whole of the DC Extended Universe and if Jeff Johns could have really done a better, a better a way of doing it, then he should have started again with his own franchise. But they were lazy and they were messy. So they wanted to rearrange what Zack Snyder did within the Snyderverse. And this is where the problems began. But now we've got Warner Media and AT&T and we've got the Snyderverse back and we can right these wrongs, which is really, really important. The fact that we've never heard a Suicide Squad skull. The fact that Margot Robbie was sexualized by the studio and not by the director, which I also also always suspected. You know, they, they come out talking about empowering women, but this is how they treated Margot Robbie. No wonder she went nuts and did Birds of Prey and set up an all-female production company, but she went about it the wrong way and she made things worse with her Birds of Prey movie. I've known David Ayer as a filmmaker, not as a person, for a very long time. When I watched that Suicide Squad movie for the first time, I gave a blistering review and reaction on my then Instagram account, which I don't have anymore. I've got a different one. But I was very scathing about the film, and quite rightly so. But David got the blame from all of us. And it was never David's fault. What they did to him was disgusting, wrong, and when you read the interview with Shiraz Faruqi and Ray Fisher and you see the depth of the depravity and what they did to Zach's vision, it was wrong. But interestingly enough, Jeff John's interference and his music video cut of Suicide Squad nearly made $800 million at the global box office. So even though it was disgusting what they did, what Jeff did, worked for the global audience and it's always going to be interesting to know and we'll never know this even if we see the air cut on HBO Max how much money David's movie would have made but of course we will never know that. Screen Rant are reporting that um, James Gunn is saying that Suicide Squad 3 in the DCEU is a big possibility. Suicide Squad 3 is definitely possible, says James Gunn. This article is by Cooper Hood. The Suicide Squad writer-director James Gunn says it's definitely possible that Suicide Squad 3 will, will be made in the DC Extended Universe. James Gunn says Suicide Squad 3 is definitely possible after the Suicide Squad. Warner Brothers and DC Films launched the Suicide Squad franchise in 2016 to mix results. We've just discussed that, haven't we? On one hand, David Ayer's movie, not David Ayer's movie, by the way, was a box office hit that grossed nearly 750 million worldwide. But Suicide Squad was also poorly received by critics and general audiences. I don't think it was um, badly received by general audiences because they went back. Otherwise, how did it keep keep? Why? How did it make 750 million globally? Right. But Suicide Squad was also poorly received by blah blah blah. This has also this has allowed Gunn to steer the franchise in a new direction, with the Suicide Squad due to hit theatres in summer 2021. Is that even going to happen? The Suicide Squad is partially a sequel to the film and a reboot, although Gunn doesn't like to classify the movie as either. Instead, he will reinvent the look and feel of Task Force X. 
The new film will bring back stars from the original movie like Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn and introduce new faces like John Cena's Peacemaker and Idris Elba's Bloodsport. The Suicide Squad is widely expected to receive an R rating too, especially with Gunn teasing a multitude of character deaths. He is scheduled to go back to the Marvel Cinematic Universe after and direct Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, but that doesn't mean another Suicide Squad film won't come, because I've warned you, um, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is the last thing he will ever do for Marvel and Disney. I've warned you about that. He's a DC man now. But we carry on. Gunn recently spoke to Empire about the making of the Suicide Squad and his plans for the movie. During the conversation, the writer-director also briefly touched on the possibility of Suicide Squad 3 happening. As shared by fandom, Gunn says that a sequel to the Suicide Squad is definitely a possibility. Neither the studios nor Gunn have confirmed plans for Suicide Squad 3 at this point. Gunn's first instalment in the franchise might still be almost a year away from being released, but expectations are already high. His work with the MCU as well as his other directorial efforts show why he's great fit to tackle the Suicide Squad. Some may even argue that DC's Superman villain team is a better match for his style than Marvel's Cosmic Misfits. Gunn is clearly enjoying his time with DC too, as it has already been announced he's making a Peacemaker spin-off show for HBO Max. He's going nowhere. It might be a while before Suicide Squad 3 is confirmed, but another instalment in the franchise is likely to come if Suicide Squad is a big hit and DC is willing to wait a few years for Gunn to wrap up Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. He could easily return to direct another, but the franchise has already experienced direct to change over and the concept doesn't necessarily mean a tightly woven trilogy. That's true. A story is needed. If, if Gunn is too busy or doesn't want to direct Suicide Squad 3, which he does, the movie could still be made and see DC give another director a shot to put their spin on Task Force X. Right, yeah, great stuff there, Cooper Hood. Um, yes, listen, uh, my opinion is that the Suicide Squad, whatever you think, whatever you're wishing, is going to be a massive hit for James Gunn. And listen, Warner Media and Warner Brothers obviously don't give a shit because they've already greenlit the Peacemaker series straight to streaming on HBO Max. So obviously the test screenings and the feedback has been brilliant. I suspect because when a director says he could definitely do a Suicide Squad 3, that means the studio are really, really happy with him and want him back. I think he's a full time fixture of the DC Extended Universe and everyone is going to have to accept that. Scott Edwards sent me this article from comicbook.com. Mark Guggenheim says he would consider making an Arrowverse movie. I, of course, said the other day, wasn't it? What I said the other day, wasn't it? Um, that um, I believe that all these Arrowverse shows will be cancelled and we will get movie entries into the Arrowverse exclusively on HBO Max. Let's see what he had to say. During a panel for Comic-Con International Storytelling Across Media Series, over the weekend, Arrow co-creator Mark Guggenheim said that he would consider making a movie that starred the Arrowverse versions of DC Heroes if the opportunity came along. The acknowledgement came as he confirmed that he has officially stepped away from the Arrowverse. While Guggenheim had not served as showrunner on Arrow or the other show he co-created, DC's Legends of Tomorrow, in a few years, his involvement as the showrunner of the CW's annual DC superhero crossover events had kept him very involved in the day-to-day -day operation for the shared universe those shows inhabit. Now, with Arrow finished and Supergirl about to wrap up, Guggenheim is ready to move on with last year's Crisis on Infinite Earths mega event as his victory lap. Guggenheim and Arrow co-creator Greg Belanti are working with the comics legend Jeff Johns on Green Lantern for HBO Max. And Guggenheim has written at least two screenplays for the film during the pandemic lockdown. One a draft for a film based on Rob Liefeld's comic Profit and the other a spec script for a legal drama he's shopping around. We asked him, with that as the backdrop, where, wherever he might want to bring the TV versions of DC superheroes that he's so closely associated with into the feature film world. I think so, Guggenheim told me during the panel. I do love these characters and I do miss working in this world. You can see the video below. Some fans would argue that Guggenheim's mega crossovers were movies unto themselves, which they were, especially in the last four years, as telling a single interconnected narrative took, took over for the more serialised nature of crossovers 
from the first couple of years. Guggenheim, though, knows there's quite a bit of difference between the two. The difference really, I think, comes down to the way I work with the showrunners. Guggenheim explained during the panel, it's a very sort of, I want to say it's a delicate dance, but that implies that people are difficult to work with. And that's not at all true. Everyone's wonderful. I feel very strongly, having been someone who's run these shows, that my job is not to come in and dictate anything to any of the other showrunners. If someone was doing that to me, I would find it really obnoxious and annoying. So when I did the crossovers, I felt like my goal, goal was to help provide a rubric or a structure that the different showrunners could come in and sort of, of hang their various ornaments on and help in terms for moving the dialogue forward, both in terms of breaking story and in terms of how we do, how do we produce this monstrous monstrosity. That's its own little trick. That's a very difficult endeavour. I can imagine, imagine these crossovers, right? They're so difficult if you think about it because they, they're different episodes that have to be cohesive together. That isn't easy. Then writing a movie work. It's just me in a room when I'm writing a movie. Yeah, I'll do it in a conjunction with production partners and studio execs and everyone has ideas and notions. But even on movies where I've got, got a director attached, at the end of the day, it is just me alone at the keyboard. So it's a very different type of experience. Yep, so that is really brilliant. That's from Mark Guggenheim. And thank you, Scott, for suggesting the article to me. Listen, whether Mark Guggenheim does it or somebody else does it, you can expect straight to streaming HBO Max limited movies for Supergirl, The Flash, Arrow, all of these people. And this is really, really exciting when it's finally happening. And it's finally going to be announced. But that's how I see things going for the future of Arrowverse. Also, Scott Edwards wants me to rank the Arrowverse Justice League. Um, do you know what? My mind's an actual blank. I can tell you what my favourite character is. And that's Stephen Amell's Green Arrow from the first two seasons of Arrow. Then it would have to be um, and Grant Gusting's The Flash. I love Sarah Lance, um, even though Sarah Lance was made captain for political, feminine, feminist reasons. And we all know that uh, she did. A, you know, um, Katie Lost did such a great job and is doing a great job. So I think she'd probably be my third favorite hero. And where would we? Well, and then I'd say um, Black Lightning. I love Black Lightning. Black Lightning is amazing. Um, I can't really think of the others right now, but I think that's what. That's, if you're talking about my top four, you know, Arrow, The Flash, uh, Katie Lott, Sarah Lance, I suppose Black Canary would come in fifth. Uh, so that would be my kind of standing for that. So I'll repeat again. If you want to ask me a question or suggest a topic or an article for me to read out, tag me at Movies TV Mad on Twitter and we can have a nice little debate like I've just had with Scott. Here on Saturday's DCEU Daily. Comment down below, like, share and subscribe. And I'll be back for more videos later today or maybe tomorrow. I know you'll miss me if I only make one video. I'll see you again soon.